Hello, everyone. It's Stephen and Walter here again for another episode of So Chatty, episode number 93. And we're calling this Making the Most of Your Embroidery Machine. Yes, today we're going to talk about how you find files, the different types of files, and how you transfer them over to your embroidery machine. But more about that. But right now, let's see what I've been working on. Well, it's colorful. It's very colorful. This is called Color Splash. It's not done yet. It's a block of the month. We're up to the sixth month, and all those little lovely swirly color pieces are all appliqued on this. And well, I really like it. It went, oh God, high praise. Um, I do too, and I'll be glad when it's done. But um, yeah, I was thinking, okay, there can't be that much more to go because you know, right now this is a fairly good size. Don't ask me what the measurements are on it. I don't know. Um. But no, you see this inner border right here with all the checkered, different checkered ones? Well, there's another one of those to make that goes all the way around the outside of this quilt. Oh, that'll make it look pretty. Oh, yeah. And then there's another black border that goes after that. So um, our instructor, Donna, the hostess with the mostest from Ultimate Sewing, who's teaching this online to us or has been guiding us uh, with this, um, she decided to put the next two months together as one month because she said basically the last month is just a black border, which is just strips. So, you know, might as well put the two together. Now, you don't actually sew together all these little squares. It's actually strips and then you cut them and you ah, get that checkerboard. Them. Yes, but the tricky part is when you start to lay them out, making sure you get them in the right mm -hmm. order because yeah. if you notice, it's sort of yeah. there's a yeah. mirror image. In all and the plus corners. there's one, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they make it that stair step look, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not hard to do. But I'll be glad when I get this done. Then I have the big decision as to quilting it. Well, I will. Uh, and I'm, I'll be quilting it right over top of the appliques because I've done that before and that's not a problem. Um, I don't know what I'll use for a thread on it because there's so many colors. and I don't know what, well, it depends on what you want to do. I don't know if I want the quilting to really show up because this has already yeah. got a lot of features on it. Maybe do something relatively neutral to give it a um, just some texture. I don't know. And then the point comes, do I wash it? I always wash my quilts after I've made them. However, this is raw edge applique. Now, it's all batiks, and they're all sewn down um, around the edges. Uh, batiks don't fray as much as regular cotton, but there will be probably a teensy bit. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But if I don't wash it, the batiks are a little stiffer. So the quilt itself is kind of stiff. We'll see. We'll figure it out. I may ask Donna what she's going to do with hers because she's making hers too at the same time as the rest of us. So that's what I've been up to. Now, this is the part where I say, Walter, what have you been up to? But Walter's well, been up to things. During crafts and chat, oh, did I did put on a collar on uh, on a short sleeve shirt that I was working on. Ooh. So I still have to finish that shirt. So no, maybe you can show that on live on. Yeah, design. maybe I'll do the hem of the. I may not be able to get the buttons on, but anyway, actually, I may be able to get the buttons. Well, on, whatever. If you push yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of doing maybe a pop up tomorrow, but I don't know if I will or not. I'll see. Okay. Um, I don't want to get people too excited about pop-up and then wear you out. We might be snowed in. Well, we might be. Well, it'd be a good day for pop-up if we're all snowed in. The big snowstorm of the century is on its way, apparently, according to the weather. Yeah, tonight it's coming. Oh, freeze. And they're going to have thunder snow. Have you heard of thunder snow? New one to me. I was just getting over the whole fact they have something called grapple. 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 Mrs. Grapple. Grapple. And she's a character, a uh, teacher. Mrs. Uh, Grapple in uh, Simpsons. Yeah. Isn't it? Simpsons. But now we heard there's something called Thunderstorm and or Thundersnow. Thundersnow. Apparently it's... Is that like Thunderdome? Yeah, Thunderdome. Yeah, under the Thunderdome. Where's Tina Turner when you need her? Mm. Um, Yeah, thunder snow, And I guess it's like a thunderstorm in the summer, except without rain, it's snow. So... Where do they come up with these things? I don't know. They sit around these weathermen all day trying to think of cute names for things. So we don't know what's going to happen. So moving on then. Walter has been busy. He's been busy 
purchasing things. Also transplanting things. Oh, and transplanting things too. So he can tell you all about it. But I will cleverly question him about it as prompts. Okay. What is this, Walter? This is a coffee machine. And what's the make? Phillips Seiko. Phillips Seiko. And this, what does this coffee machine do that our other two coffee machines don't? It makes all kinds of good stuff like uh, uh, regular coffee and cappuccino and lattes and all this other stuff. And my favorite. And it's not like you can't do that with another coffee machine, but the, it's not on here on this one right now. The picture is not here right now, but it has a special container that will have has milk in it and it will automatically add well, automatically foams and adds the milk add milk to it as well oh yeah this little sucker does all kinds of things and i have made a video it also grinds the coffee for you yes it grinds the coffee as well and if you have ground coffee already there's a spot for you to put that in too yes it is a super deluxe barista type machine and on um next week on my vlog i will have a video showing us playing with it when we took it out of the box and we're now we're experimenting with different kinds of coffee because the coffee Walter bought from the company that produces this machine. No, no, that sells the machine or sells the machine. Yeah, they uh, have coffee, too, which is supposedly they source it right here in Ontario and everything. We weren't really fond of the taste of it. Yeah, so. uh, it just man, it tastes so watery. So we bought another type, a couple of other brands of coffee beans to try. And uh, one brand we bought is a. Uh, I want to call it Lava Coffee, but it's not. It's Lavaza. Not. Lavaza Coffee. And uh, it's okay, because that's what I I have in my cup right now. And I've been drinking it. Actually, I gave it an extra shot of espresso, though, because you can do that. with Yeah, machine. you can make coffee, and then if you decide you want it extra strong, you can add a, uh, a shot of espresso to it. And it has various things, you know. You, it'll, you can program in five favorite brews. So, you know, you just hit one button and you want a cafe or a cappuccino and you've got it set up the way you want it because you can adjust the temperature, how much comes out, the strength of the coffee, all how much stuff, foam is on how it. much foam you want. And so you program that all in and you get it the way you really want it. And then the system will save that. And then the next time you want that, you just one button and a bing, it remembers and that's what it will make for you under that. So, yeah, it is a, a sophisticated little machine. Not a cheap little machine. But, you know, Walter, he found a sale. That's why we have it, because Walter found a sale. Well, actually, I wasn't really looking for a coffee machine, but I was looking up other stuff uh, for another machine that I bought. And uh, I can't, I just happened to stumble across these, and I thought, hmm, they sound nice. Yeah. <laughs> and he says to me, well, you know, and I said, "Why you want one? Well, you know, uh, and that, because, you know, and then he started to rationalize how much we spend on Nespresso capsules in a year. You know, it's the rationalization because this little sucker was on sale for how much? 1200 No, no, it was, uh, it's regular price is 1400 and uh, it was on sale for 1100 Bargoon, buy two at that price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyways, I figured, well, we can't take it with us, so, and we do drink. We don't drink tons of coffee, but we do drink enough coffee. And we do like cappuccino. And we could make cappuccino with our other systems, but it was more involved because we had a separate milk throffer. You had to get that out, plug it in, pour in your milk, scoop the thing out. Whereas this one, you just go, bing, frothy milk. And it even has a built-in cleaning system as well for the throffer. It, it, it in checks water through it and the whole bit for easy clean and that kind of so thing. So we'll see. So we'll see. Well, we have it now. So, yeah. But uh, we'll have to experiment further. But there's more. Because Walter also bought... Actually, we bought the coffee maker together. Don't you think that Moneybags here was buying everything, okay? But this next toy, Walter bought. What is it, Walter? It's like a KitchenAid Mixmaster. Yep. But now lots of people have a KitchenAid mix master. This one, is this the top of the line one? Uh, I don't know. It's not really as far as I know a top of the line one. You can get ones that are much more industrial than this one. Oh, yeah. 
but this is a one this is a bowl lift one that uh, Costco sells so and they had it on special it was on special so yeah, uh, I uh, it came in red or silver I kind of wanted the red but they were all out of stock on the red and I thought well silver is fine I don't really care about the color yeah. that much as long as it does what it's supposed to do but yeah. and he's got like it's got a dough thing in there and it's got a dough hook it's got a regular uh beater it has one with a scraper on the side of it and it has a whip whip a whip Ooh, can we can whip better now oh um, so, but i mean i i have a a regular uh sunbeam mix master and i've always used it for you know cakes and things like that and uh, that i got a long time ago and i always sort of said well what do i need another one for but but it was on sale but i don't know i've always kind of wanted one so i thought well why not and you know when you work out the price of making bread or a cake in the old mix master and how much you spend on that a year it just justifies <laughs> this yeah right um but he there's more he bought special attachments. i bought accessories to it then what did which you is buy? i bought a pasta maker maker which I do have a pasta maker, but it's a crank. System. But it's by hand. Oh, my God. He's not getting any younger, you know. So cranking things, you know. So, so and I do make pasta every once in a while. So I thought, well, it would be kind of handy to have that. So I got that. And then. And I, but wait, there's more. <laughs> and I also got an uh, attachment that shreds cheese and uh, and veg vegetables. Slices, dices, and makes julienne fries. Like yeah. So um right now that's what i've got now they do though have another little attachment that extrudes your your pasta to make fusilli and things like that he didn't get that yet no i don't have any desire anymore yet okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> i think that'd be like one of those remember the fun factories you know you put play-doh in and squeeze it yeah, yeah. Boom, boom just hours of fun so yeah now we have to figure out where we're storing all these things of course where the coffee maker was or the two coffee makers were sitting before well we still have the nespresso up there because we still have nespresso capsules and those little suckers are kind of pricey because usually when we order more we it usually ends up costing us about 200 dollars, and we get i don't know how many capsules do we get for that uh, not that many no <laughs> considering now they're about a dollar 30 each that's expensive coffee and of course we have a keurig and uh we've had several keurigs over the years so now i moved the keurigs down here it's behind me where you can't see because i'm thinking on pop-up so days craft and chat and that i'll sometimes run upstairs to get a coffee um so i thought well we'll put it down here and then we I have can... lots of capsules still so. yeah for that and i don't know how how much well i use that now that we've got the better coffee machine I'll probably use the other one down here for convenience sake. I'll see. I don't know. I actually don't drink that much coffee. I drink maybe two cups of coffee in a day. Today is a little bit different because we've been testing it and putting it out. So, um, And I only usually drink those in the morning, not in the afternoon. But Walter likes to have his afternoon coffee and cook it because it's very European, you know. So now he can... No, I can have a special. You can have a special, a little cappuccino in the afternoon. Ooh, how 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 posh! <laughs> You're just precious. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, those are the new toys that we have purchased. Well, you'd think we were made of money. Well, we're not. Okay, I'm just switching over some other screens here that we need today. So today. We have had people ask us many times, where do you get files for the different embroidery projects that I do? What can you do with an embroidery machine? We have talked about those two things before in the past, but we're going to be a little bit more organized, I hope, today about it. And how do you get uh, your files that you may purchase online? How do you get them into your embroidery machine? And that seems to be a really significant question because a lot of people don't even realize they can go and buy embroidery files online because their machine has come with like 100 or 150 or something different ones and they think that's about all they can use. Well, no, no. You can use all kinds of things and do all kinds of things. So we're going to talk about those today. Now, disclaimer here. 
We are talking about this primarily from a Janome point of view. Although in general, most of the thing we're most of the things we're talking about today will work on any modern embroidery machine. And when I say modern, I mean a machine that doesn't take a special disc or CD or whatever. Uh, something you know, that something that uses a USB or or gets uh, their file or, or they're wireless. Transfer your files wirelessly yeah. through Wi-Fi. Which most machines, at least for the USB part. If you bought an embroidery machine in the last, oh, 10 years, probably, uh, that's how it, it probably works. Oh, there's some tricks to all of that. And we're going to talk about a little, some tips and tricks too. Okay, so let's start off with where do you find files? Well, there are hundreds of places you can go to, but I'm going to spotlight about five or six here that I go to on a frequent basis. And the first one that I go to most of the time is this one embroidery online it is by oesd which stands for the oklahoma embroidery stitching embroidery and stitch designs i think that's what it stands for um they are probably one of the largest ones uh around and they literally have hundreds if not thousands of designs that you can purchase online this is just their opening page and they usually show you you know they, they run specials all the time but it gives you a sample here of different kinds of things you can make. Because a lot of people think that um, the only thing an embroidery machine is good for is putting on a cute little picture or a monogram on a t-shirt or on a, a towel. Well, you can do an awful lot more with the machine. And we'll talk about some of that in a few minutes. Um, but this is one that I go to all the time. And all of the sites I'm going to talk about today um, will be in the show notes below. So you can click on them. And price-wise usually very reasonable for single designs you can buy some in collections um and some things do tend to be a little more expensive depending on how elaborate they are and what what the style is but that's one another one is urban threads now urban threads is actually owned by oesd so why do they have two sites they actually have three but this one urban threads it's a little bit different in the designs. If you're looking for something more traditional, go to, uh, to Embroidery Online. If you're looking for something a little more avant-garde, a little more modern in a look, then check out Urban Threads. I don't understand why they don't have these all combined into one site. Um, I don't know, maybe this was a company they purchased at some point and they left it that way. But Yeah, I, I happen to like a lot of designs on Urban Threads that they come up with so yeah like look at this one in the rainbow kind of thing uh so yeah um now they call it artist crafted machine embroidery design so it's just got a little bit more flair than maybe some of the designs you'd find on uh embroidery online they also have a third one and um i don't have it here because it used to be separate like urban threads but now it's embedded in embroidery online that's called scissor tail stitches and again it's got a few designs and things on it that you can't find in these other two that i've mentioned then there's one i go to this one actually fairly often designs by juju now the one thing about designs by juju i find is some of their stuff is a little juvenile or cutesy for my liking like you see here these table runners kind of a thing but they do have other things that um, are a little bit more sophisticated. And I've bought s several of their in-the-hoop designs. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, that are actually very sophisticated. So I like them as well. And then there's designs, Creative Kiwi. This is out of New Zealand. They have a lot of really cool designs, and their prices are really good. But what's even better is they have a YouTube channel, um, Kay's Cuts, it's called. Uh, and she shows you how to do many of the designs. She takes you right through step by step, setting up the embroidery machine and the hoop, putting it in, how to, uh, you know, do whatever you're doing. She especially focuses on what they call in the hoop applique uh, in many ways. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I do like this site as well yeah, so those tutorials are good especially if you're a little unsure about what you're doing 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, if you're not used to doing in the hoop projects or whatever, then you can watch you that. watch the tutorials to get an idea of what you have to do. And all of these companies, they have instructions for any of their in the hoop designs, anything like that. Um, I, that usually come right along with the files that you have uh, purchased. And I really suggest you print them out when you get them and follow them through carefully, especially your first time, um, because they are a help. And they're usually done with visuals. They have pictures showing you actually how to set everything up. Um, this is Sweet Pea. Now, I used to poop off Sweet Pea. When I first got into machine embroidery, I took a look at Sweet Pea and I thought, oh, God, it's all full of cutesy. But since I said that, I have bought many of their designs and I really like them. They're very well explained, like I was just saying about documentation. Um, and they have gotten a little bit more sophisticated in time. Uh, so, yeah, if you're into the cutesy, you see like cutesy, that's cutesy. OK, but look at this. That's much more sophisticated, um, too. So they have a nice mixture now of that kind of things. Um, you can even do a quilt. We'll talk about that in a moment uh, in this. But another great site. Now, all of these sites, with the exception of Creative Kiwi, are American sites. So the prices they're quoting you are in American dollars. And if you're an American, you don't have a problem with that. If you're Canadian, well, you know the... the uh, drill for that but on some of them they'll have a little thing up here which says currency and so you can switch over from the u.s to canadian if you're canadian if you're european or something like that well no it's not going to work that way but now you see prices have changed now we know what they are in canadian roughly okay i'm not sure how they do that conversion i don't know if there's an automatic thing in their program that keeps up with what the current exchange rate is um but yeah, so just be aware that when you see, like, for example, let's take a look at this one. Um, 1631 uh, Canadian, it says for that one in U.S. dollars, it's 12. <laughs> so you see $4 different, a little more than $4 different. So it makes a difference. Not, but that's just the plight we have as being Canadians. Okay, so that takes me to types of projects. So here's just an example. I've gone back to Embroidery Online, and I'm just going to show you some of the things. Over here on the Technique section, they have your classic, which is what most people consider embroidery to be. Like, for example, this little, let's go back over here. You see this little pineapple thing, you know, they're showing it on the edge of, uh, what's that? What is that? Table collar. cloth or something? Or collar, okay? Uh, like clothing things or on a pillow or something like that. Pretty much classic embroidery, you know, kind of a thing. But you can have something called freestanding lace. I love freestanding lace, especially at Christmas time. I have made these, the snowmen. They have they have a there are three dimensional product yeah. project. So that like a little model or something like that, or a little house or something. And uh, it's three dimensional, so you can. It has all different sides and stuff, and stands up. And you see, they actually have a collection. You see how much six hundred and twenty dollars forty one. If you want the whole collection, it would take you forever. And there's more than just what they're showing here, like uh, all these sides. So you could do a Christmas village, uh, but if you were to do this, okay, even if you were going to spend. That kind of money. And that's six hundred and twenty dollars American. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what would be in can you know, I guess they don't have, have a switch. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be that'd be probably over eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Canadian. More than likely. But you would have, I'm not sure how many are in the collection. Does it tell us? Entire check out the entire winter village. It says all nineteen winter village collections. From twenty ten to twenty twenty two. Yeah. So they every year they put a new item out. Uh, and people collect them. But if you were going to sit down and try to make the whole uh, Winter Village, it would take you, it would literally take you years because these are not fast to do. They're fun. I have made many different types of these freestanding um, 
things, but uh, and I love them, but they take time. So let's go back here. Then there is applique. So let me turn off the freestanding. Okay, applique. So uh, you see all of these are different applique projects. And now if you do traditional applique, you know, you cut out your pieces, you have them backed on something like steam a seam or whatever. If you're doing raw edge, you put them on top of your pillowcase, pillow, your fabric, whatever. And you've got to stitch all the way around them so they won't fray. You use a blanket stitch. You can use a satin stitch or a running stitch. Depends on what you want to use. They're time consuming. And if you are not uh, well experienced in it, like that quilt that I am making, don't look at my stitching too close on it um, because it's it's tricky to keep your stitches nice and even and and straight, you know, in around that kind of thing. Well, if you get one of these designs, you don't have to worry about that because essentially what you do is you put your fabric into your hoop with your stabilizer. You push one button first and it will stitch out an outline of where you put down your first piece of fabric for the applique. You just cut a chunk of fabric. You don't have to worry about cutting it into the shape. You just have enough fabric that colors, covers the stitching line. And then you hit another button in the order and it'll stitch all the way around that. They call it a tack down. Then you take a pair of applique scissors and you trim around that stitch line. And uh, then you, you build from there and it'll build pieces onto it. It'll eventually get to the point where it will do a satin stitch all the way around the applique. So you don't have to worry about your fabric fraying. You're not doing needle turn, but because you're doing a satin stitch, there's nothing exposed in terms of raw edges of your fabric. And I love doing them because they're fun to do. They're not as tedious as having to do applique using your sewing machine. Um, and they have hundreds and hundreds of different projects that involve that. You can do table runners, see? This one's a quilt. I actually own this one and I've only done a few of the blocks and I've had it for a couple of years. Um, that one's cute. I never saw that one before. Oh, I like that. Okay. No shopping. Ooh, 95, 96. Why? That must be a whole quilt. Mm -hmm. It's a collection. It's a collection. Oh, okay. So if you want the whole collection. 36 designs. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. But you can do quilts, and I have done quilts. And if you look, oh, a collection is basically a. If you explain it, is a, a collection is basically a collection of a bunch of designs, and you just buy it as a big package. Big package. So yeah. it's you know if you say you like this style, and uh, see, let's see, they usually give you a picture of what's in the package. Yeah, here you go. Now, you can buy these designs individually. You don't have to buy the collection, but if you want the whole collection, because, you know, the style all goes together. So, you, I like this. I didn't see this before. I wonder if this is new this year. Mm. Ooh, I really like that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not. I got too many projects now. Uh, no. Plus, it's $95. Yeah, I know. So, I'll wait till it goes on sale, because it will. They have sales all the time, especially on Christmas ones in around October or so, they'll start putting a lot of their Christmas collections on sale. Um, so there's that kind of thing. Let's get out of that. Let's get out of that. Now, I mentioned, I'm going to come back to, oh, I'll do quilting right now. We just talked about that. So you can do entire quilts. This is Quilter's Building Block. Yeah, again, it's a collection, but you can buy the individual blocks. So basically, it's like paper piecing in a sense, except you're not using papers. And you're just laying down your fabric and you trim it when it gets tacked down, like I was talking about before with the applique. Uh, so in a sense, it is a form of applique, but you will have batting under each one of these. And then they give you instructions on how to put it all together. And if you look over my shoulder, those, all those ones you see up here, all those four, those are what we're talking about. They were all done in the hoop. They're all quilts as well. Now, these ones are more wall hanging than quilt, but it works the same same way. So they do take a while to do, but I, I love the end result. Um, my New York beauty that's over there. You know, if you ever made a New York beauty, um, you'd run into all kinds of problems, a lot of cutting points. You might have Y seams, the whole bit. 
don't have to worry about anything like that if you do something like this. Now in the hoop, again, are uh, I love in the hoop projects. And they're essentially an applique type project, but there's all kinds of different things. They have hot mats, they have cards. You can do cards. Um, I have tried with the cards, they don't throw me, but other people love doing the cards. And you know, it's all the rage to do those uh, quilted postcards kind of a thing. Well, that's what this is. Um, utensil holders, treat bags, tags, envelopes, bookmarks, notebook covers. Um, you can even find ones that do like zipper bags. You're going zipper bags? Yes, you can actually put a zipper in one of these bags while it's in the hoop. They give you instructions on how to do that. Um, towel things, uh, holders, um, you name it. One of the in the hoop projects I like doing a lot are placemats and uh, table runners. I've done quite a few of those, but I have done pouches before too. And then there's novelty items like cup wraps, um, pin cushions, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, this is all done in your, with your embroidery machine. So, you know, it's, it's a long cry from, you know, let's do a tea towel. Um, then they I have put a monogram on a towel. Yeah. Then they have line work and red work. Long, now long arm quilting. You're going to say what quilt your quilt on an embroidery machine. Well, yes and no, you can buy quilting designs, which they're in a format that you can use in your embroidery machine, or you can also use them in your long arm machine as well. We're going to talk about uh, formats in a, in a moment. So you can go on here and let's say I really like this one and I wanted to use that. I want to do some custom quilting on my machine. Now, of course, your long arm machine has to have a computer on it, uh, like Quilt Path. That's what the program that I use. But you could use this in an embroidery machine, mm -hmm. too, if you just wanted to do uh, a table runner uh, or a table runner. Or if you wanted to do uh, uh, a small quilt where you uh, where you do it block by block. Yeah, or whatever. like a baby quilt. Yeah. Um, you can buy, though, designs as well that are edge to edge. Um, these are individual designs right here, uh, you know, for a block. But there are now I probably can't find any on here. But there, I think you passed it. There was a different section that had had them on. Oh, was there uh, quilting? Up. Oh, up here. Yeah. This. Uh, See classic. Oh yeah. Pant pantographs. Where are you looking? But down. Yeah. Go down. Up, no. Up, up, up. See up. Hey, classic. Oh yeah, quilt. yeah. Classic. Uh, yeah. So this one is like an edge to edge design. Um, can you do, you could do a baby quilt. I wouldn't go any bigger, although I know some people do and they have success. I've tried. I did not have, well, I did it. I actually did one quilt that I did it all in my embroidery machine. The one I had at that time, which was the 15,000. I have a 550E now, but, um, and we're talking Janome machines. Um, but I found it cumbersome to do it and it wasn't easy to get things lined up so it did look like it was edge to edge uh but as i said these will also work in uh your computerized long arm too but if you want to do a table runner or a placemat or something you could without any problem with something that size um then they have like something called tiling scenes which i have done this is basically a quilt and it's take off your golden thing there we go. Okay, so like for example, this one. I actually own this one. I haven't made it yet, but these are the individual blocks. And this is all embroidered and then you assemble it. But there is batting underneath it. And oftentimes, now this one doesn't look like it's showing it, but they will also incorporate a quilting design as if it's been actually quilted uh, afterwards too. So um, it it's a lot to choose from stitch and turn you know there's all these different things that are here and available yeah so like it'll let it like for instance starry night with santa which is one that you did they're all yeah. little panels of embroidery all stitched together 
right? Yeah, I actually made this one and it looks like it's one big piece. It's not. I think there are 30, 32 panels in this and then they show you how to sew it together. Now, this one is not applique. It is completely embroidered. Um, yeah, it takes a long time to do it and there's a lot of colors in it. In fact, uh, with OESD, they sometimes will match it up with a special set of threads that will go with it. And you can see the prices, like when you get yeah, the, the threads. The, the pattern 6804 and the thread kit is another $265. Yeah. So I didn't buy the thread kit because I didn't need to. Um, I already had lots of threads to use it. And I didn't necessarily use exactly the same colors they did, but I could make it close to what it was. It it is spectacular when it's done and it's well worth the effort. But this is not something you're going to start December the first and expect to have it hanging up in a week's time. There's no way. There's not enough hours in the day to do that. You've got to plan yourself uh, for that. So yeah. So I thought you'd be interested in seeing all the different things that you can do with an embroidery machine because a lot of people think it's just for oh I'm just going to put a monogram on a towel. Well, yeah, I mean, like uh, we have a friend, uh, the guy that uh, taught me sewing classes for shirts, got an embroidery machine to put like uh, his idea was to put embroidery on clothing. And he says, well, I said to the lady at the store, well, I don't need an embroidery machine with a big hoop. And I said to him, you'd be surprised at what, how much you would use the big hoop, even on what you want. And sure enough, later on, he came back to me and said, yeah, I didn't realize how much embroidery I would be doing, even uh, and yeah. the hoop sizes that I would be using. So yeah. he was happy he had a, a machine that had a fairly large hoop. And embroidery machines are not cheap. So you may as well make the best of it. If you're going to invest in an embroidery machine, it seems like a waste of money for something. You just want to monogram a, an initial on a towel for. But now you can see all the other things you can do. And one I didn't mention was freestanding lace. Well, they call this freestanding applique. It's a combination. But if you notice all of this, this is all lace that it, the machine does it. And you put it on a special water-soluble stabilizer that just uh, rinses out. And it keeps them all stiff. And then you attach them together. Um, you can do angels, snowflakes. I've done all kinds of things. Houses. Houses. Yeah. That kind of thing. So flowers. Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Snowmen. snowmen. Christmas tree ornaments. You can even do cut edge napkins uh they show you how to do it how to set up your your fabric for that and you can do this very intricate okay it wants me to go to quick view you can do this very intricate design and i have done it and it's not hard to do but it looks so nice when you do it um like they make a great gift for somebody and they'll think oh you went and got expensive italian lace or irish lace or who's famous for lace uh somebody with that so anyways i wanted you to see all the possibilities that are there so the next thing we're going to talk about is um file types can you does it matter what embroidery machine what brand embroidery machine you have uh will it work with all the files yes and no with that so i'm going to show you what i mean here so here is a design, and this is usually you want to buy it. Uh, this is a collection. We've already talked about that. But if you look up here, they'll tell you the available formats. And they give you all these letters, ART, DST, EMB, EXP, HUS, JAN, JEF, etc. Throughout. Well, it depends on your machine. Like if you have a brother machine, it usually uses PES and I think PCS. If you have a Janome machine, it's going to use uh, JEF. If you have a Husqvarna, it's going to use an HUS, etc. But do you need to, um, well, yes, you do need to know what the file type is that you're going to use. But usually when you buy a design, when you download it, you get all of these formats, usually. Or in some cases on some sites, when you buy the design, it'll have a pull down window saying, which, which kind of file do you want? So in our case, Janome, I would always go with the JEF. Um, but that's important to know um, because, you know, 
if you're using a Bernina machine, then probably, I don't know if it'll... Well, I know I've read somewhere on the newer Bernina machines that they'll accept several different ones, including the Genome Embroidery mm -hmm. file. However, I was just looking that DST is popular for Bernina machines, and that may be the older ones. Yeah. I don't know. And DSTs actually work with Genome machines, too. DSTs, though, tend to be a very special file format. They're not necessarily an entire embroidery file. Uh, they are sometimes they're used if you want to do some cutting out um, paper to cut out your appliques in advance and then lay them down in the more traditional way. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. Uh, actually, EXP or DST are the two for, and for Bernina. However, I did read on the, I think it was a newer one, the 770 or 790, that it said it had uh, different embroidery type files and JEFs were included. In oh, there. okay. So usually any files you'd buy from any of the sites that I've pointed out to you, and there are other sites too you can go to, um, they will allow you to pick a design that will work with your machine. You just have to know what that format yeah what format you have on that machine and your your manual is going to tell you that yeah so um now so let's say you've bought a design and how do you get it well here's a sample on embroidery online actually this comes from files that i have bought in the past that's another thing too once you've bought a design it stays in your account for life so if you need to download it again because you erased it from your computer or something like that, can't find it, you can go back to your account online and you can find it and you can download it again because you've already purchased it. And you'll also notice here it says all available formats. So if I was to download that, that would give me all of the ones that it comes in. But, you know, some companies will only allow you to uh, download just the one that you. Yeah, the one that, that, that you need. Yeah. Um, other ones will like this, like embroidery online, will allow you to download all the different ones. Yeah, but let's say I don't want all those other ones. Like, what am I going to do with an XXX one or a VP3? You know, yeah. I only use that, so I can just click on that, and that puts it in, and, I, and then I download it. And it's just like downloading any other file. It'll come up, ask you where you want to save it. So you set up your system on your computer to put it in a say you've got an embroidery file or something or a directory on it you just drop it in there and basically that's it now sometimes if they're a collection they will ask you you know do you want this to come to you as a zip file which means that way if there are 32 different files in it you're not having to download each one individually you can get it in one file, which is a zip file, which is compressed. And all computers, no matter what format you're using, whether you're using Windows or uh, a Mac computer, uh, once you have it on your computer, you can open it up. It'll expand it, and you'll have all the files there for you. It just makes it faster and simpler. Some will also ask you, some sites, whether you want to have the files emailed to you or you want to download them right directly from the site. I don't usually bother with having them email it to me. I go, I'm right here now. I just download it right from the site. But you do have that option. So that's basically how you get it to your computer. Now, Not they sometimes give you just an embroidery file, but then sometimes they have supporting documents that come with it. And I was going to talk about that next. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, uh, let me see here when I was going to talk about that one. We're coming to that. Okay. Um, now you threw me off track. Oh, well, I guess I should let you. Yeah. And, yeah, whatever. Keep the people entertained while I look for where I was going to do this because I want to keep. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I haven't got to that yet. All right. Fine. But we will come to that. Usually they will have embedded in the files that you're downloading a file that's a PDF that is the instructions and how to do it. If they don't, they will have instructions somewhere on the site that you can pick up for it. And the, as I said, they're usually in a PDF format. Those you would print to your computer, or you could look, read them on screen, whatever grabs you, but on the screen of your computer. Now, at this point, we are only at getting it to your computer. But how do you get it from your computer 
to your embroidery machine. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to go to that yet. So let me just switch over to us again. So it's really easy, but you do have to understand a couple of things. First of all, usually you transfer the files that you have purchased. You copy them to a USB drive, a thumb drive, whatever you want to call it, stick. And so you have to know how to copy from your computer to your stick. I'm not going to show you how to do that because every computer system is set up slightly different for it. So if you don't know how to transfer files from your computer to a USB, learn. <laughs> um, it's not hard. It's, it's a basic computer skill, so you should, yeah. uh, should know how to do that. And maybe one thing we should say, if someone's watching this is, does not have an embroidery machine at all, and um, who might be thinking about getting one, you need some computer knowledge, basic knowledge. You have to understand directory structures on whether on how it works on a Windows or how it works on a Mac machine. If you do not understand that. And you don't understand about <laughs> copying files from one area to another. Where have you been? Then you may have to rethink that. Yeah. And that is not in the scope of what we're doing today to start explaining that to you. As I said, every system is slightly different. But those are basic fundamental computer skills. So, you know, most people know how to do those kind of things. So, and if you do, you shouldn't have any problem figuring out how to copy your file that you've gotten from your embroidery site onto a USB stick. And then you take your USB stick and stick it into your embroidery machine. And if you don't know how to do that, look in your manual for your embroidery machine. But usually it's the same as on a computer. There's a slot. You put it in, bang, your com your machine embroidery, your embroidery machine will read it. Maybe, maybe. Okay, this is where a lot of people get very frustrated. And you have to understand the directory system that is being used by your embroidery machine. And I don't know about other embroidery machines, so I'm just going to talk about Janome. But here's what happens with the Janome. You have to have a, a directory system built onto your USB drive first that the machine can read. So let's even back up a step. A U, USBs come in different sizes, but your machine might not be able to handle something that's larger than 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, or 13, 32 gigabytes. Our machine, I think, what, it's 32 gigabytes? I think so, yeah. I think 32 gigabytes. If your USB... Like you may have thought, well, like I'm going to have a lot of embroidery files, so I'm going to buy a huge capacity USB stick. You know, you might buy a, I don't know, 512 gigabyte or something yeah. like that and thinking, wow, this will cover me forever. Yes, it would, but your machine may not be able to read that. It's too big. So make sure you check in your user manual what your maximum size of uh, storage capacity for a USB stick is. Second, you have to understand how your uh, machine is going to read the USB stick. Yeah, it's possible for you to put it in if you don't know that, and it looks like there's nothing on it. Yeah, you just can't copy it over to a blank uh, USB stick. Well, first of all, you need to format your USB stick, okay? Um, and that's fairly straightforward and again that is something you do with your computer first um and so you have to read your your sewing machine manual it should tell you what your format needs to be for the usb yeah stick. now don't go any further with that because it comes it can become confusing if we start mm -hmm. talking about formatting uh formats or whatever check the manual then on the embroidery machine for the Janome, you have to have a file, a directory called EMB. That is your master directory, okay, on the USB drive. Then you have to create a subdirectory underneath that called EMBFL. FLD? It's the, I thought it's EMBF. Or EMBF. But, um, uh, EBM, okay. EMBF. I thought it was EMBF. EMBF, I think. Anyways, it's a subdirectory. 
And that in that subdirectory is where you will copy over the file you've just downloaded from your uh, embroidery file site. You copy it into that. Now, if you don't put it in that directory structure, in the case of the Genomi, you'll plug your USB. That file will be on the USB because your computer will read it, but your embroidery machine will not know where it is. It can't find it because it has to be in that particular directory structure. Now, that's for a Genomi machine. I don't know how it works with a Bernina or a Husqvarna or any of the other uh, embroidery machines out there. Again, that is something you have to find out in your manual. But a lot of people don't know that, don't read that part in their manual. They just copy it to their USB and, you know, figure and it out. And they can't find it. it. And then they can't find it and they don't think it's on there. It's there, but it has to be in that directory structure. So that's... And it has to be the file format for the machine. For the machine, Which yeah. in that case, in the case of a Genomi, it has a, have to have a dot jef extension yeah on the jef jef yeah. um jeff jeff a jeff file uh now you know i said earlier that you might download all the different formats when you plug that in even with all those formats in the right directory structure you're not going to see all those formats the only thing your machine is going to show you are the ones that work with that machine so that's why i said it's a bit of a waste of space to have all of them on your drive although embroidery files tend to be very very tiny in size yeah um, so like i mean if you think that you want a great big usb drive even if your machine could handle it um the embroidery files are very very tiny yeah and uh you don't really need that big of a, a, a drive for that i have literally hundreds on the usb that's in my machine right now it's only a 32 gigabyte and i've got tons of room still that's how small they are okay so that's the first thing another thing you've got to understand when you plug in the file into your machine is it will come up and tell you which hoop you should be using for that particular design it's very very important that you use the hoop they recommend because if you use too small a hoop and you're printing or you're uh sewing out the design the machine will not know. It'll think that you've got a bigger hoop in there and it'll carry on its merry way. And suddenly you're going to hear very horrible noises that are going to scare the bejesus out of you because it means your needle is now going through your hoop edges and ring. It's going off it. It's jamming up because you didn't put in the right hoop. So make sure you always check for that uh, when it comes up. Now, another thing you need to know. Um, you may be able to do some simple editing on your machine. Again, you have to figure that out from what your manual tells you. What I mean by simple editing is you might be able to make the design a little bigger. You might be able to make the design a little smaller, but it'll have a maximum capacity. Like on a Genomi, the biggest I can make a design is 120% bigger than the original size. The smallest is 80% of the original size. I can't so, go... So, yeah, basically you can go 20% bigger or 20% 20 smaller. smaller. Yeah, with it. I can rotate the design if I want to. So, say the design's this way, portrait, and I want to go landscape, I can do that in my machine. And there are some other things you can do as well. But you can't do major editing. Like, let's say you want it to alter a whole part in it. Uh, you want to eliminate a part and put in something else, you know, change it. No, you need to have a separate computer program. Or if you want to uh, change the style of stitching or something yeah. like that. It, you'd it, have to go you'd through have an, to another go through program. An yeah. And that would be one on your computer, like something like Artistic Digitizer, which is the Genomi product or what's the one the big one hatch um uh, yeah hatch by wilcom or whatever yeah there and there's in brilliance that's put out by i think, I think brother yeah i think brother has a brother has their own version but different companies have their own uh suggested um uh editing software or actually uh, that software would allow you to create a new design a new well. design too and they do a lot more other other things too but that the software is very expensive yeah the artistic digitizer i paid over 1100 dollars for that program now please don't make a suggestion that you would like to see how that works and how you do it no not happening 
we took some courses in how yeah, to use and even it. when i've used it i only do something simple or it takes me a long time to fumble through it yeah and it's really on a need to know basis if i have something i really really think i would like to alter i will use artistic digitizer and try it but it's hunt it's and i and have error. occasionally made a new design that i wanted to you wanted to do it it was a custom design but it takes hours and hours to do a yeah. custom design and like i said it's a very very steep learning curve if you're somebody who loves to you know, want to develop you're very creative you want to do this kind of thing uh, to make a really unique original design, then maybe it would be worth the expense and it might be worth the time to learn the program. But um, if you're a novice and stuff like that, that uh, and you don't have a huge amount of computer skills, then yeah. I would stay away from those. Yeah. And you want to know something? I have found that I really haven't had to use that much because anything that I want, I can find online. Uh, did it? you know, to download. So, you know, somebody else did the work for me and that's fine by me when it comes to that. Okay, now another thing that uh, Walter alluded to that uh, I'm gonna go to now is something called a thread chart. This is a good thing to have because it will give you a printable copy of all the colors that are going to be used in your design and when they're going to be used. That's what you see here. The first thing that's going to happen with this particular design, and there's the design up here, is it's going to lay down thread. They call it sky. They give you the color uh, number. Now, that color number, though, is for a specific type of thread because OESD sells and uses in all their designs uh, Isocore uh, thread. I don't use Isocore. I use Floriani. And then there's other brands on the market as well. Are you screwed with this? Is this useless? No, it's not. Because you notice it's giving you an approximation of what the color sort of looks like. And your machine will show you that as well. Your embroidery machine, when you load up the design, at least it does on the generic. Yeah, and, and deviating from the colors, the original colors, and, uh, and colors you may have are not usually that much of a big deal no. so and there may be some colors in a particular design you don't really like you yeah like if it own. said uh i don't know the sample that you had might have had thank you on it or something thanks on it in orange if you decide you want thanks in purple yeah. you can do that or gold or whatever you want um also you'll notice in this particular one with embroidery online they have instructions that you can uh, it'll tell you this is a whole printout. This is a series, but if you go down a little further, it will show you the thread chart for each color. And again, it's Isocor numbers, but it gives you an idea. So yeah, they always have. Some... And you may be able to find um, online uh, uh, conversion charts to the thread that you use, depending yeah. on on what you're using, but. Uh... But usually the conversions are an approximation anyway. Yeah. And I actually have an app put out by Floriani on my phone where I can plug in the number that comes up for another brand of thread and it will give me the equivalent or what's close to the same color, giving me the Floriani number. And so what I often do is I'll make a list of those numbers before I start to embroider and organize my threads. And I have a big collection of Floriani, like over 600 spools. Yeah, well, and I have a, a I use a thread that's not on any list. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a more inexpensive brand of thread. That, But what I just do is I take a look at what the color is suggested to be. And I pick a color in my collection that's uh, approximately the same. Yeah. But what I was saying, too, is I make a list of the colors that they are suggesting in whatever thread they're using. I use my app on my phone to find what uh, Floriani thinks is close to this back color. And then I'll go to my drawers of thread and I will look and I'll physically take out the thread, look at it and decide for myself, hmm, do I want to use that color there or don't I? And I will write down the numbers of my threads of my Floriani threads for it before I ever start working on it. And then 
I'm not stopping and starting for long periods of time looking for the next color because you look at this design that's up here on the screen. This was a this is a small design, but there are 20 different color changes, which means almost that there's probably 18 to 20 different colors. Well, you can see there's all the colors there. So if I had to go, I stitch this out, then I stop, I go looking for the next color and stop, it's going to get tedious. I do it all at once, and then I have all my threads lined up in the order that I'm going to use them, and I have a five spool uh, stand on my embroidery machine so I can put five different colors in that spool at a time. I still have to thread them individually. It's not an industrial machine, like an industrial machine, like a seven needle or a 14 needle or something like that. The idea of those is once you get all your colors on that sucker, you don't have to thread it anymore. Once it's done, the machine will go right to the next color and pick it up. But on a non-industrial like machine, you're gonna have to thread each one individually, but that will just save you a little time. So there is some planning involved in all of this. But once you've done it a few times, it becomes old hat. It's not to, you're not, you shouldn't be afraid to use your embroidery machine for more than just a towel. And don't be afraid that you don't have exactly the right color. Yeah, because there are no embroidery police. It's your machine. You can do whatever you want to do with your design that you've got. So anyways, we hope that this maybe clarified some of the mystery about embroidery machines. I know for some people, they can be very scary. They're a piece of high-tech technology. But you know, once you get into it, you're going to love it. I absolutely love machine embroidery. Do it all the time. And uh, I've made some really well. You see them behind me in that and there's more <laughs> there's a lot more of those around the house um too so anyways um hope you found this helpful and i think that's all we're going to talk about today you will find in the show notes below links to all of these embroidery sites that i've mentioned today as well so you can go and explore them as well you can tell them that we sent you but that won't make any difference to them you're still not going to get a discount <laughs> they don't know who we are okay I think that's enough for now. Okay, so we're going to say goodbye and we'll see you next week for yeah. another episode of So Chatty. Say goodbye, Walter. Goodbye. <laughs>